Simone and Zaghi's Inter Milan are currently flying. And Zaghi's fascinating tactics have stormed Inter to the top of Serie A with a big 12 points gap between them and second place Juve. Inter boasts the best attack and defence in the league and nobody in Italy or Europe quite seem to know how to cope with their switches of formation, wide overloads, rotation, interchanges, combination play, attacking central defenders and the fantastic strike partnership between Latoro Martinez and Marcus Taram. Inter Milan truly do play some of the most eye-catching football in Europe, a system that knows how to win with their current record and their performance in last year and this year's Champions League backing that up. Inzaghi's 3-5-2 formation has become the talk of Serie A with devastating attacking fluidity. So join us as we delve into the intricacies of Inzaghi's masterful tactics that have propelled Inter to the summit of Italian football. So we will start by looking at what Inter do on and off the ball with some help from MT Analysis on Twitter. So make sure you go and check out that account. Structurally, Simone Inzaghi's team, Inter Milan, adopts a 3-5-2 formation. A way for Inter to beat a press is by following the pressure. This is essentially a player running into a space that a pressing player is leaving behind. Inter often attempt this and it is usually the aim of getting in behind opposition fullback, creating a dangerous attacking opportunity for Inter Milan. During the build up, one of Inter's eights, usually Mkhitaryan, will drift wide and combine down the left with his wing back and wide central defender, or he forms a double pivot with the register Hakan Chahanoglu. Both strikers, Latoro Martinez and Marcus Turam, are always ready to drop deep and offer runs to attack space in behind. This structure creates overloads that allow them to combine entire areas for the progression. Inter's wide overloads and combinations will usually consist of their bullside wide central defender, a wing back plus Chahanoglu plus Mkhitaryan or Barella with the dropping of Lataro Martinez. When Dumfries is playing as the right wing back, Inter Milan's build up will then usually be more through the left hand side so that he can push higher and be an outlet for the progression. Depending on the opposition, Nico Barella can be seen moving into the right back area covering for Dumfries. Inter Milan will also use their centre backs to enhance the offensive numbers and create numerical advantages in the opponent's final third. The wide centre back will often make underlapping runs adding unpredictability to Inter Milan's attack. Inter's strategy is also to advance through the centre, doing so by utilising their two centre forwards who can play in close proximity. This arrangement creates central overloads and allows for combinations with Barella, Mkhitaryan and Chahanoglu. Another aspect of Inter's successful build-up is the partnership and constant teamwork between the strikers. One striker often drops while the other stays high, pinning the centre-backs. This creates space for the dropping striker between the lines, allowing him to get the ball, turn and attack the back line. If a central defender decides to push up on the dropping striker, a massive space opens up for the other striker to attack and receive a through ball from the back line or the midfield. Inter's ability to seamlessly shift positions and rotate fluidly creates a dynamic and unpredictable attack that can dismantle even the most aggressive pressing tactics of their opponents. During the high build-up, Inter Milan often rotate their build-up structure to confuse opponents and adapt to their opponent's formation, creating numerical advantages in different areas and, of course, scoring more goals. Bastoni, DeMarco and Mkhitaryan on the left flank display a remarkable level of synergy and coordination, allowing them to link up for combination play. In addition to that, they are also frequently interchanging positions, which is keeping the opponents guessing. When done with position, it can be an absolute treat to watch them play. On the right side, players opt for more simpler play, relying on quicker one-two combinations, one-on-one -on -one situations for dump freeze and running into the open space. In the final third, Inter are a team who fancy their chances from crossing situations. Inter are ranked third with the most crosses in Serie A. Defensively, by often having a numerical advantage in the midfield, this leads to better defensive transitions. With many players close to the ball after losing possession, Inter will counter press after winning the ball and do so successfully. Inzaghi's team uses counter attacks with a high tempo 
after regaining the possession, targeting the spaces between the centre backs and the full backs. And lengthy spells without the ball, Inter Milan will adopt both a low block and a high press strategy. In the high press, Inzaghi wants his team to defend man to man. This means that the centre back will push up on the midfielder and the midfielder will mark the full back. It's crucial that players on the opposite side of the field do not continue to mark their initial opponent. This is because it's difficult for the ball holder to make a pass from one side of the field to the other. Instead, they should come in, play more narrow and help create numerical superiority defensively in the centre. This can decrease the risk of dangerous 1v1 situations. Inter Milan's game plan is characterised by their cool-headed approach to defending and their ability to launch swift counter-attacks. This style of play has proven to be quite effective as they have scored the most goals from counter-attacking situations in a highly competitive Serie A league. Their opponents are often caught off guard by the speed and precision of their counter-attacks which can quickly turn the tide of the game in Inter's favour. So welcome to the Data Hub, we're just going to have a quick look at some key data to further understand Inter Milan's style of play and why and how it's been so effective. Looking at open play, not only do Inter Milan have the highest XG, they've also of course scored the most goals and have the second highest shots as well. Their conversion rate is the best in Serie A. But they're also very strong from set pieces as well, they have the second highest XG from set pieces and looking at the set piece shots, they have 116 which is the most and they have the most set piece goals in Serie A too. That's the attack because I told you that they have the best attack. Now looking at the defence, again, they also have the best defence. Looking at the XG conceded, they have the fewest XG conceded, conceded the least goals in Serie A, but also shots as well. They have conceded the least shots in Serie A, just one less than Torino. When it comes to defending set plays, they are also very strong. Only Fiorentina have a better XG when it comes to XG conceded from set plays, but it is Inter Milan with the fewest goals conceded from set place. So that was the attack and the defending. What about the team style of play? According to Opta, Inter Milan are slow and intricate with possession. So on average, they play about 4.5 passes per sequence, which is the highest in Serie A. They're not the slowest team, but neither are they the quickest. They are actually fairly slow in possession. Only a handful of teams do play slower in possession. And we can see here, in possession, passes per sequence, 4.49 is for Inter Milan. In even the sequence time, 11.90. So they are fairly slow or they do take their time with the ball. They are patient. But now, when it comes to direct attacks breaking fast, it is also into Milan, most likely after winning the ball and they go on the lightning counter attacks. But we can see here they also prefer that build up play. Only Napoli have built up more attacks than Inter Milan. Now we're looking at the zones of control. Where do Inter Milan actually have control on the football pitch? against the opposition. So blue is for the teams, which would be Inter Milan, looking at the Inter Milan uh, zones of control. Gray, it will be a contested area. And then red will mean that the opposition have control of that particular area. Looking at Inter Milan, we can see here that they build up very, very narrowly. But when it comes to chance creation, where does the ball go? To those wider players, the Marco and Dumfries, who are highly, highly creative. Interestingly, we can also see this little blue box here on the left hand side in this little channel half space area where Mkhitaryan will be operated. And earlier we spoke about how Inter Milan prefer to build up on the left hand side and have those combination play down the left hand side, especially when Dumfries is starting on the right. Now, earlier I did say that Inter Milan can be patient off the ball, wait for slip ups, and then go on those counter attacks. And the PPDA sort of backs that up. So Inter Milan are six when it comes to PPDA. So that means they will be the six most intense pressing side in Serie A with Fiorentina, Napoli and Bologna being the top three. And when looking at the turnovers that end in a goal, Napoli are top, but then second, it is Inter Milan. Again, proving how effective they are on their counter-attacks. But that's it for the Inzaghi tactic and also the data. Now we're going to go into Football Manager and recreate this tactic. But also we're going to have a look at some of the player data as well from in real life to help us pick and choose those player roles. Come with me. Let's get stuck in. Oh man.
If you've enjoyed today's content so far, then please, it would be hugely appreciated if you can go and check out the Patreon. And if you can afford to support the Patreon, then please consider it. You can support the channel as little as £3 and you can join man like Suffit, Alexander Davis, Carol Zeno and Zapotec. So thank you to those four who have recently signed up to the Patreon. And if you could do too, <laughs> that will be amazing. Now let's go into Football Manager. So welcome to FM and now we are going to have a look at the Simone Inzaghi tactic in Football Manager, which of course we are going to be starting out with that 3-5-2 formation. Now you could start the 3-5-2 a bit like this. You could be a bit brave and just have a flat 3-5-2. But what we are going to go with is two wing backs and also we're going to bring this centre midfielder into defensive midfield. But don't worry because this centre midfielder will not be holding his position in front of the front three or the back three even no 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 no. he's going to push forward you know what we're just going to have a lot of movement within this tactic so this team fluidity here that you see at the bottom left is going to be very important vital for us to change this to either fluid which it already is or to uh, very fluid which would mean more supportive duties so briefly we will be looking at some player data as well to help us figure out those roles and also i am paying for this site as well so i need to get it in a video it's coming out of my pocket man so already there's three players that kind of jump out at me and that's latoro martinez that is also nico barella and of course DeMarco. So we need to find a way to get DeMarco to be creative. We need to find a way to get Martinez to score goals, but also be a threat from dropping deep and carrying the ball forward, beating players and progressing into forward. Now, Nico Barella is the one that surprises me the most because you wouldn't expect him to be the one that's carrying the most threat in this inner side, but he is. And that already has given me some thoughts to his player role. So for the DeMarco role, the left wing back, we're going to leave him as a wing back on support, who is going to be getting further forward but I think it's vital to have him on support for that team fluidity but also so he can combine with players on the left hand side and not act out more individually we want him to be more team involved if that's a thing so wing back on support but we want him to be creative so we are going to add more risk by asking him to dribble more take more risk but also cross more and cross from the no, we just add cross more because he could cross from deep as well. Last Toro Martinez, very important that he drops. You only really got three roles. So we've got deep line forward, support on attack, complete forward, and also, well, pressing forward on support actually as well. And a full nine. I won't go with a full nine because it's goals that we need, which is also why I'm not going to be using a deep line forward because again, having someone on the support of duty is actually going to be very, very key here. So complete forward on support because he's still going to spearhead attack. He's still going to be further ahead and get into the box looking to score goals but also when he does pick up the ball more importantly he is going to dribble more carrying the threat and lastly for DeMarco we are actually going to use an advanced playmaker so and before looking at that data I was trying various roles so with the complete wing back on attack here which would be Dumfries I did have this guy here as a ball winning midfielder hoping he can shift across and win the ball when Dumfries goes ahead that didn't really work out for me then I went to a box to box midfielder still weren't giving me what I wanted especially that threat then the last sort of role that I tried out was advanced playmaker and to be fair it actually did work perfectly when it comes to carrying threat from those passes but also we can see how important he is when it comes to linking up play so when it comes to one twos one twos open Nico Barella is joint first with 11 with Hegem with Henrik Mkhitaryan and when it comes to one twos closed then again it is Nico Barella with 15 um, one twos closed so he is very very involved in dictating the tempo for Inter Milan but also you can see counter pressing actions as well the hard work and Nico Barella is pressing a lot which is one reason why I used the ball with a midfielder but he wasn't giving me the other stuff that I needed he also plays a lot of free balls as well what about Chaha Nogalu, who has the most passes who also creates the most chances so for Hakan Chaha Nogalu, register if you do watch Inter Milan there's really no other role that we would have chosen here it's almost impossible not to watch Inter Milan and be like oh I want to try that tactic out with Hakan Chahanoglu as a register. There's absolutely no way you can do that. So we are going to be using a register and advanced playmaker in midfield. So that's two playmakers in midfield 
football will be naturally attracted to those sort of areas when we are building up as they are the playmakers so those are sort of the key roles i want to get the very best out of those certain players in certain roles so now it's time to choose the other roles that will complement those key roles in goal we are going to be using a sweeper keeper on support now inter milan don't really use long balls at all all so it's going to be very important for our goalkeeper super keeper to be playing out from the back the reason why we are not using a super keeper on defend i did put this on twitter yesterday so a little tip maybe again here for you guys that if we do use a super keeper on defend we will be keeping the mentality on balance by the way so if we do use the keeper on defend his mentality is defensive so he's not going to be risky in his action he's safety first so he's going to be doing a lot of long kicks on the ball if he just sees your um defenders marked he he might not want to take that risk and he's just going to kick it long but inter will take that risk in real life so for me a sweeper keeper on the fence is an absolute no no we can use support which i did use support and that just boosts him up to balance now what you're getting is a balance of risk he is going to balance it from time to time now admittedly we did score a couple goals from him kicking it long and martinez also win winning the flick on and that can be the beauty of this 3-5-2 in football manager or if you want you can use attacking where he's going to be attacking taking a lot more risk and if you are this shoot distributing the ball quickly then he will look to distribute the ball quickly as well because now he's on attacking his risk has increased passing and tempo the back three well <laughs> Things can be a bit interesting here. So we are using a wide centre back and another wide centre back on support with a ball playing defender in the middle. Now, this means actually we've only got one, one defensive duty in this tactic. And that is just showing you how fluid this tactic really can be. So this player can get further forward. He can get further forward while he's the only player really staying back. And then we've got players getting further forward. We will have a player shifting out wide head. Advanced playmaker can drop, he can shift, and he can push as well we've got a lot of roaming movement in this field which is one reason why we are using a balanced mentality because we need to balance that risk if everyone is roaming around getting further forward and pushing trying to receive the ball we need to be careful of our rest defense because we've only got one ball playing defender or one defender on defense so a balanced mentality allows the wide center back for an example who's on balance be like hey this is not a good moment to push forward let me not just push forward the other center back is going to be doing the same the ball might be on the far side and he's thinking i'm just gonna stay back there's no need for me to go forward and help support play so that is one reason why we are using the balance mentality now if i change my mentality to positive and click on him now he's on that positive mentality now he's gonna have more of that thinking of i need to support play i need to support plays firstly he's gonna have a higher starting position but also make those forward runs more aggressively and more early we don't really want that lastly in midfield we are using a central midfielder for Henrik Mkhitaryan I have tried many roles the away version of this actually especially when you're playing against the big teams he will be a Mazzala on attack but that's because the system changes a little bit at the moment he will be on a central midfielder on support but we are going to be asking him to stay wider wrong from his position so he can help drift and combine in those wider areas but also we've added more risk to Henrik Mkhitaryan again he's only on balance mentality which is going to simply add more risk by taking more risk we can add more dribbles but I don't necessarily want that from him. So for the instructions of these players in the deeper areas, the wide centre back will be crossing more often, the register will be closing down more and passing uh, shorter. So he is going to push further forward off the ball, but we are reducing his risk a little bit because of the area that he's in in possession. The advanced playmaker will also be passing it shorter and roaming from his position. Of course, the wing back, the centre back, and the wide centre back have no instructions. Lastly, we do have a complete forward for Latero Martinez, but for Marcus Torres we are using that advanced forward someone that is going to have the most touches in the box because that's what Turam has for Inter Milan So for the team instructions, balance mentality, attacking width is set to fairly narrow wide. We do want to encourage sort of that build up through the central areas and also decrease the width in between our players for that tight, close combination play. For the approach play, we are going to play out from the back. So we do have three defenders and a playmaker in defensive midfield. So we don't need to play out from the back, but 
it's what Inter Milan do and also it does help our arts decentral midfielders as well to drop and be involved in the build up and this is where we can do our little tiki tacky one two passes and combination play with our short passing and slightly higher tempo in the final third low crosses we've worked the ball into the box um i've got this on even though it does decrease the crossing a little bit it also reduces the long shots massively i mean there were many games we've having 20 shots but 11 long shots what would happen is the wing backs will go to the byline sometimes not cross the ball play it back to the center midfielder the center midfielder passes it then to someone who's in and around the edge of the box and they just have a long shot i feel that work the ball into the box kind of decreases that in transition counter press and counter attack exactly what in to Milan do and when the goalkeepers in possession distribute the ball quickly to the centre backs and take short kicks now when it comes to distribu uh, distributing the ball quickly our goalkeeper is not going to be great at, at that again because of his mentality and he's just sometimes he's going to be on that balanced mentality and not really look to distribute the ball quickly defensive shape we are high pressing with a higher defence line but the trigger press is dropped down now to more often with prevent short goalkeeper distribution earlier I said that Mkhitaryan will be on the Mazzala on attack in a different system when you are away against those very very good teams you you know those good teams martinez now is a pressing forward he's still going to drop deep but he's just not going to be that complete forward and then we've got the mazala now getting further forward breaking forward especially on those counter attacks hakan chahanoglu unfortunately has lost a bit of his creativity when it comes to roman he's now a deep line playmaker just making sure we do have some protection in front of that back line the wide center back on the right hand side is now on the fence and that is also because the complete wing back on the right hand side is now on support we have actually increased the mentality because now we've increased the risk i do want to hit certain teams on the break so now we are passing into space i've just increased the risk here a lot but i have dropped our defensive line so even though our on the ball passing and stuff has been increased i've sort of balanced out with the positive mentality that defensively we're not so aggressive we are now dropped down to standard with a standard defensive line, I guess. <laughs> so, that there are the tactics. Now we can have a look at those results. So Inter Milan did win the Serie A, of course. We played 38, winning 32 of those games in the Champions League. Ah, we were the runners up, of course, to Manchester City again. Haaland in the 58th minute, but we've had a, we had a good game. I mean, you wouldn't say we deserved to lose. We had the higher XG. They had three of their seven shots blocked, but here's Mendy on the ball, plays it over the top to Foden, and yeah, you you know the score here. Haaland just out jumps as Sherby and go whatever. Yeah, whatever. Manchester City. I'm not salty about that at all. But the Coppa Italia, we did beat Napoli 2-0 in the final. A Sherby scoring a double don't worry we do not actually have a set piece uh routine set up so if i go to my stats and looking at the goals from corners we are only i say only on 11 because if you do have a routine this number could be a lot higher also my set pieces on attack i do like my short uh, corners but the best going forward the best defensively the fewest conceded and the most clean sheets possession wise we are 56 percent and looking at the pressing as well as you can see here we're not a tense at all we are 11 so around mid table when it comes to pressing in Serie A, not intense at all so one thing i did get right is the expected or the creativity from demarco and also nico barella so what we are doing here is sorting out expected assist per 90 nico barella if we're looking at first team players david clarson only started six games if we are looking at the starting players demarco with 0 0.34 expected assist per game nico barella on 0 0.28 now toram did score 43 goals but martinez did have a very good season as well scoring 22 goals in 36 starts who did have a two-month injury actually in this game as well a, a few injuries actually so two around the top goal scorer i mean martinez could have been up there if he were injured so much looking at the assist nico barella was 17 the marker was 16 hakan chahanoglu with 11 martinez with 11 linking up with his strike partner unfortunately though Ha! <sighs> that wraps up today's video i hope you guys have enjoyed it this was the most requested tactic by the way that i've had this yeah don't forget you can sign up to the patreon if you want to support the channel i'll see you guys soon stay safe god bless love you all peace out